Now let's look at the effect that changing our uh, D has on the graphs of sine and cosine. So what we're doing is we're adding a value outside of the function. And again, I think from the knowledge that you have from transformations, when you add or subtract a value outside of the function, you should expect a vertical shift, either up or down, right? If, so let's do the same. We'll open up the graphing calculator. We'll graph y equals sine x and y equals sine x plus 1. We're adding one outside of the function, right? Adding outside of the function has a different effect. Remember, adding inside a function shifts you left or right. We're outside. And I'm going to go back and do a zoom, zoom 7, to get my window back to a standard trig window from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. Here's my original sign. And now here is the graph of sine x plus 1, which should make sense to you. Okay. All right. So what I want to do is show you how to graph this transformation quickly. So I'm going to graph the original sine function. And I'm going to just let, I'll have the scale be 1 in this one again so it will fit. I'm not going to graph the sine function with a solid line. I'm just going to graph it with open circles. Uh, Zero is at the beginning, halfway, and at the end. I have a max a quarter of the way and a min three quarters of the way. And let's just um, stress the fact that the period for this function remains the same because the coefficient in front of x is 1, or the, the value, so the period is still 2 pi. We know that. The amplitude is the absolute value of a, and a is still 1, so the amplitude is 1. The max and min value are going to change. So I have a rough sketch here of my sine function, the original. I am not even going to use a broken line. I'm just going to leave the open circles here. They are my reference points. I know that when I add 1, all of my values are going to shift up 1. So where I had a 0, I'm now going to have a 1. Where I have 1, I'm now going to have a value of 2. 0, I'm up 1. Negative 1, if I add 1, I'm going to be at 0. And at, at 2 pi I was at 0, I'm now going to be up 1. So the graph, to graph this by hand, graph the original function with open circles and then just shift each, pa each point up 1. But now I have a new maximum value, right? Since I've shifted the graph up, I'm adding 1 to my max value. And I, I shifted one, um, the graph up 1, I'm going to add 1 to my minimum value. So my minimum value is now 0. The period has not changed. We have not changed the value of b. The amplitude is the same as the original because we still have an a value of 1. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video and then graph the cosine, a basic cosine graph down here. We'll just do one cycle. And then we'll shift, uh, shift the graph um, down 2. So take a minute and do that, and then answer your questions about amplitude, period, uh, maximum value. So I know the amplitude is 1, um, because a is 1. I know the period is 2 pi, because b, the value of b is still 1. I'll wait on my maximum value until I graph. Um, so we'll graph the basic cosine function first. I have max uh, at the beginning, at the end of the period uh, for my original cosine, a min halfway, zero is a quarter of the way, and three quarters of the way. Now y equals cosine x minus 2, I'm going to shift all of those ordered pairs, or all those points, down 2. And so my new graph, same shape, same period, only now my maximum value is negative 1 which makes sense because you're taking the original maximum of 1 and subtracting 2 from it. My minimum value is now negative 3. My original neg uh, minimum was negative 1. I subtracted 2 from that. And so once you know the basic graph for sine and cosine, you know the shifting and the transformations are very similar to those that you've learned for other graphs. So when we answer the question, how does changing the value of d affect the graph, you get a vertical shift. It's a vertical shift. 
up when d is greater than 0 and down when d is less than 0. So the last transformation we want to look at is how c affects the graph. And you can assume the one shift we haven't done yet is left or right. So we're looking at horizontal shifts left and right. And so let's graph y equals sine x and y equals sine x plus pi over 2 on the calculator. But we're only going to graph, we'll do the same thing, we're going to graph one cycle and we will um, just graph the final graph solid. We'll graph the original graph as a light graph. So we'll pull this up on our calculator. We've got sine x already in there. Let's graph the sine of x plus pi divided by 2 and we'll graph. So here's my original function. Here's my second function. So comparing the transformed graph to the original graph, if you can see this at 0, 0, right, at, at x equals 0 I had a y value of 0. Now at negative pi over 2 I have a y value of 0. When um, at pi over 2 in the original graph I had a y coordinate of 1, now at 0 I have a y coordinate of 1. So what's happened is the whole graph has been shifted to the left pi over 2. This is called a phase shift and there is a formula for phase shift and I um, generally I, I look at it slightly different than the textbook does. The amount of the shift is c over b, and remember the generic, uh, the form we're looking at is uh, y equals a sine bx plus or minus c, depending on how you, um, you know, generically you put a minus here, but the bottom line is that if this value is positive, you're going to shift to the left, so you have a negative phase shift. And if this value is, uh, if this is a negative, you're going to shift to the right, so you'd have a positive phase shift. The amount of the shift is always c over b. So when you're asked, what is the phase shift? In this case, our c value is pi over 2, and b is the coefficient of x, which is 1. So the phase shift is pi over 2. Since we have a plus sign, the shift will be negative. So we're going to have negative pi over 2 as our phase shift. Our amplitude for this graph is 1. The period is 2 pi over b, and since b is 1, it's just 2 pi, so we're not changing our period. And the amplitude we just said was 1, and we since we don't have um, a value d here, since d is 0, we're not adding or subtracting anything outside the function, our maximum value should be 1, and our min should be negative 1. The only thing be effect being affected here is a horizontal shift, and we are shifting to the left. So what you want to do is you want to graph the basic sine graph again, and then we'll shift all the ordered pairs. So graphing a quick, um, the quick sine curve, I've got my five points graphed with open circles, and now I'm going to shift every single point pi over 2 to the left. And so it's easy now. We can see that our scale here is pi is pi over 4. So every two marks is equal to pi over 2. So I'm going to shift every ordered pair to the left pi over 2. So the first point here, uh, if and if you're shifting to the left, I always start by shifting the, the leftmost point first. If you're shifting to the right, you want to shift the rightmost point first. So this 0, 0, I'm shifting, it's going to be at negative pi over 2. Uh, where I was at pi over 2, 1, I'm going to be at 0, 1. Uh, at pi 0, I'm now going to be at pi over 2, 0. 3 pi over 2, negative 1 is now pi negative 1 and 2 pi 0 is now going to be 3 pi over 2 0 
since this is my final graph, I'm going to connect all of the points in a nice smooth curve. So my original graph has just been shifted to the left. It was shifted to the left because the value um, in here is positive. If, you, if this value is negative, you would shift it to the right. So in this next one, we're going to graph y equals cosine x and y equals cosine x minus uh, pi. And I'm going to skip the calculator portion of this. You can check it if you like, but I think we've seen enough. We know that, again, if the value in here is negative, we're going to shift to the right, and we're going to shift, the phase shift is going to be pi over b. So the phase shift is going to be, um, the amount of the shift is pi over b, which is 1, or just pi. We know that it is positive because um, we're subtracting. The amplitude of this function, a, uh, the absolute value of a is 1. The phase shift we said was a positive pi. Since the amplitude is 1 and we have, we're not shifting up or down, my max value, max value is 1 and my min is still negative 1. The period is 2 pi over b, and since b is 1, the period is still 2 pi. Okay, we'll graph the original cosine curve first. So since I was shifting pi, which is basically half of the graph, I graphed, um, and I want to get one whole cycle on here, um, I'm going to, I graphed the ordered pairs, or the points, from negative 2 pi to 2 pi and I'll shift all of them over pi units. And so on this graph, every, um, every ordered pair is getting shifted over four units. So this first point is going to fall off our graph window, and so is this. So at pi negative 1, I'm going to move that over four units. One, two, three, four. And then at, uh, from at pi over 2, I'm moving this over one, two, three, four, and that actually fills in one of the points that was here. Um, shifting 0, 1 over 4 units, 1, 2, 3, 4. Shifting um, negative pi over 2, 0 over 1, 2, 3, 4, filling in that graph. Uh, at pi, I'm at negative 1, I'm shifting that over, 1, 2, 3, 4. At negative 3 pi over 2, 0, I'm shifting that over, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then at negative 2 pi up, um, up 1, I'm going over 1, 2, 3, 4. And so my graph the graph of my cosine curve has shifted over. And just if I look from if just in the window from 0 to 2 pi, um, you know, subtracting, if you have cosine of x minus pi, it has the same exact effect of actually reflecting the graph. Um, you can continue, we could continue this graph if we wanted to fill in the whole window, we can see what, oops, sorry, what's happening there. Um, but this is the graph of y equals cosine of x minus pi. You know, we have at least one cycle from here to here, from 0 to 2 pi. So how does changing c affect the graph? Um, and c affects the graph by uh, shifting, it causes a horizontal horizontal shift. Left or right.